Well, hello, boys and girls. How are you today? Are you having an amazing, fantastic day? Are you a little tired? Well, if you are, let's get ready for science, okay? This is Mr. Bruson over here to do another science lesson. We're going to do another review to make sure that we do really well on the test, okay? Because we have benchmarks coming up. So we want to do an amazing job, all right? So let's get started. Let's look at the learning target, which is the same learning target as last time. So I can apply the knowledge that I have about kinetic and potential energy to real life situations, and I can justify my reasoning, okay? So we're gonna look at some questions that give you an example of something that is happening in everyday life. And then we have to uh, apply the knowledge that we already have in our brains, okay? About kinetic and potential energy to that specific situation, okay? On top of that, we have to justify our reasoning, okay? Why is it that we are choosing that specific answer? So we have to justify our reasoning. And why is it that we're not choosing the other ones? We also have to justify why the other answers are not correct. Let's look at question number one, all right? So the image shows the motion of a roller coaster with four points labeled P, Q, R, and S. And we can see right here. See? The roller coaster P, Q, R, and S. And at which point, at which point does the roller coaster possesses, okay, has the most potential energy? So we got to be careful. It's asking about potential energy. And potential energy is energy at rest or energy in motion, potential. That's right, it is energy in motion. So at which point does the roller coaster possess the greatest amount of potential energy? So let's uh, pretend that we're in a roller coaster. Okay, it's getting to the top. Oh, and now it's going down. Woo. Yeah, if I, we were there, we would have our hands, our hands raised and we might be clapping. And there it goes, and it's going up again and down. I absolutely love roller coasters. Do you? I love roller coasters. When I used to live in Florida, oh, I always used to take my kids, they were little, now they're grown and married and gone, but I used to take him to Busch Gardens all the time. I love roller coasters. But let's get back to the question. So where does this roller coaster has, have the most potential energy? You see that P, at Q, at R, or at S? Think about it. Where does the roller coaster have the most potential energy that it can convert later to kinetic? What do you think? Here? It has to be right here because it is the highest. So this is the point where the roller coaster has the most, the most gravitational potential energy because it's going to go down super fast. So it is R. Are you ready for another question? Is your brain now working at full power? All right, let's go to the next question. So he says, examine the diagram that shows a ball rolling down a hill with four locations. L, M, N, and O. So here is the ball. Okay, here is at rest, L, M, 
N and O. At which point does the ball possess the most potential energy? Okay, this question is almost like the previous one. And I just want to show you a video. It's not a ball, it's a tire, but it's going down a hill and I think it's so much fun. Whoa, look at that. Woo! It's going fast. It's flying through the air. Look at that. So let's go back to the question and see where does the ball has the most potential energy. Well, let's look at this. This over here is at rest. Is that potential? Yes. Over here is moving. Is that potential? No. It's moving. It's kinetic. Over here is still moving. Is that potential? No. That's kinetic. Over here, it's at rest. So it's not moving. Is that potential or kinetic? That is potential. So let's look over here. L and O. L and O. They're both potential. So N is kinetic. M is kinetic. M and N are both kinetic. So the only choice that we have is L and O. So right here is the right choice because this is potential and this is potential. Now before we go to the next question, I want to make sure that you know the meaning of each one of these types of energy. So this is gravitational potential energy. And right here is elastic potential energy. And here we have chemical potential energy. So we need to know the meaning of each one of this type of energy before we get into the next question. So if it's gravitational, you know that it has to do with a gravity, right? You know that's the force that pulls all objects towards the Earth. So it has to do with gravity. So gravitational potential energy has to do with how high something is. How high, okay? Elastic, elastic has to do with springs or rubber bands or maybe something that can be stretched, okay? That's elastic. In Spanish, elastico, okay? Something that can be stretched. And then the last one, chemical, has to do with buns that are inside objects, little particles, okay, that are inside, that when they break up, they provide energy. Like, for example, a chicken breast, okay, or a tomato. Inside, it has energy. And when it gets into our stomachs, that energy is released. So that is chemical potential energy. Do you think that you can come up with an example for each one of those? Can you come up with an example? You can either do a drawing or you can uh, explain, write an example, okay? So let me show you, let me show those types of energy to you again. Gravitational, elastic, and chemical. I want you to come up with an example for each, okay? So time to write or draw. So what examples you come up with? Any examples? Anything? Come on, share them. So I'm thinking that for um, gravitational, I can just do a little hill with the ball right there. Okay, that would be gravitational potential energy because the ball is high. For elastic, I can do A ball and arrow. I have to make it a little bit. So I can do bow and arrow. That would be elastic because we can stretch. Okay, that bow. 
And for potential, I'm thinking, excuse me, for um, chemical, I'm thinking I can do uh, a, let me see if I can draw this. You know what that is? <laughs> I don't think you know what that is. I don't even know what that is. No, 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 that's not gonna work out. Oh my goodness. You know what I was trying to draw? Well, let me just do it this way. This is a car. That's a car and the car needs gas. So gasoline is an example of, of chemical potential energy. Because when, once it goes into the car, it gives energy to the car to make it move. Now we are ready for the question. Let's look at this question. Okay, so a student categorizes the objects shown based on the types of potential energy they possess, the types of potential energy they have, okay? So one is a match, two is a spring, three is a ball on top of something, four is a rubber band, five is a battery, and six is a book on top of a table. Okay, so now you have to categorize each one. So there are two that are chemical, two that are elastic, and two that are gravitational. What do you think? What do you think? So which one are the two that are chemical? where the energy is there inside waiting to be released. That's right, the match and the battery. Those are chemical. Which ones are the elastic ones, things that can be stretched? Well, that's very easy. The rubber band and the spring. So then, which ones are the two that are gravitational? That's right, the ball on top of something and the book of top of something. And there you have it. All right, let's do one more question, okay? So it says the list of objects is shown in a table, okay? The objects are a moving bus, a glass kept on a table, a pebble rolling down a hill, or a car parked in a garage. And what we want to find out is which object possesses or has kinetic energy? Okay, so which object has kinetic energy? Well, always ask yourself, what is kinetic energy? Is kinetic energy energy that is in motion, objects that are in motion, or at rest? Kinetic. That's right, kinetic has to be something moving. So let's check those things again. A moving bus, a glass kept on a table, a pebble rolling down a hill, or a car parked in a garage. So what do you think? Which ones are the two that are moving? One, what's the other one? And three. One and three. Those are kinetic because they have kinetic energy because the they are moving. I have one more question, okay? One more question. So, come on. Keep those brain juices flowing. So it says that the image shows a dam with water above, okay? The water over here. And water below. This water that is falling over here, okay? Now, the question is, which table correctly labels the form of energy of the water above and below, okay? So the first table says that the water above is potential energy and the water below is also potential energy. So this water that is still over here is potential and this one that is moving is potential. That cannot be. Let's look at number two. The water above is kinetic and the water below is kinetic. Well, the water over here is really not moving. So they cannot be both kinetic. Let's look at number three. 
The water above is potential, and the water below is kinetic. So let's see. The water above is potential, it's sort of there, and the one below is kinetic. Yes, that is the right choice. The water above is potential, and the water below is kinetic. So you see, boys and girls, you have to make sense of these questions. You can't just read them and just choose anything. You have to read them once, twice, and then imagine them in your head. And if there is a picture, study the picture, okay? Until you can make sense of it. And then you can put all that information that you had in your brain. You can apply it to that question, to that situation there, okay? Always make sense. Science makes sense, okay? So make sense of these questions and you're going to do an awesome job on your test. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and we have one more review to do, okay?